idea for Revit hackers. If you already use Revit 2024 or Revit 2025, then probably you already tried the dark theme in Revit. Some people like it, some people hate it, but it certainly affects how our Parevit extensions look like. For example, I realized that my EF2's extension looks like shit in the dark theme, and it's finally time to solve it. And being a programmer, don't you even think of manually going through all your icons one by one and changing them manually. We will do all of that with Python with a single click. And here is the plan for this video. First of all, we're gonna prepare a test project with Python for this lesson. Then I will quickly show you how to change icons into different color by using Python. And then we will go through our PyRevit extension and search for all icon.png files. And then we're gonna create a new one for the dark theme. And for those of you who don't know, in PyRevit you can create two icons. First of all, you can create icon.png for the light theme, and then you can create icon.dark.png for the dark theme. Let me know in the comments which theme you prefer, and let's begin this lesson. So, first of all, right here I'm in my PyCharm, and you can also use any other ID, you just need to know how to install packages. In here I prepared the folder, and I already added icon.png right here. You can see it's a very dark window icon, which you can barely see probably. And first of all, we're gonna obviously create a Python file, and you can call it anything you want. It doesn't matter, you can call it script.py, you can call it, I don't know, dark icons, anything you want. Now, first of all, we need to prepare our environment for this lesson. Right here on the bottom right corner, you can click, and you can click on the interpreter settings. And it's good to create a new environment so you don't kinda uh, add more packages to your existing one. So I'm gonna click here on the show all, and then click here on the plus icon. Then in here, create a new one, and for this lesson, it's gonna be a short lesson, so it doesn't matter where you're gonna place it, probably you're gonna all delete afterwards as well. In documents, I'm gonna create a new folder, I'm gonna call it, I don't know, uh, PyCharm Venf Icons. You can call it anything you want, it just have to be an empty folder. If you cannot click on the OK here, I heard from many people who use PyCharm that sometimes they need to downgrade the version, I don't know what's happening, but if you cannot click on OK, maybe you need to install previous version of PyCharm. Now, click on OK, and you're going to create a new environment. Uh, also, the Python version, I'm using 3.10, because this is what was installed on my new PC by default. You can install probably any Python free version to use the package that we need. And I'm going to show you the package in just a second. So, right here is my new Python interpreter, and I need to install just one package. Just click here on the plus sign, or if you use any other uh, interpreter, you need to use pip install and then install whatever package you want. And we want to install the pillow package. This is a Python imaging library, this is the most popular one, at least the one I know. Just click here on install package. You can just get the latest version, that's okay. And now I can see that it was installed, it became blue right here. Now I can close it, and you will also see it right here. This is the latest version I'm using, 11.00. You might have it different, but it doesn't matter. Now click on OK, and now we can begin the lesson. So here's what we're gonna do. First of all, we're gonna only test with this icon, and once we can convert this one icon, then we're gonna go to one of the extensions and change it through, through the whole extension. For now, just focus on one icon. Let's just create here icon equals icon.png, and that's okay. Since my Python file and icons are located in the same folder, I don't need the absolute path. I can use the relative path, because it will look kinda in the same folder. However, if these icons would be in another place, you would need to provide here a full absolute path. You would right click on it, click here somewhere on copy path reference, and then there is this absolute path. There is absolute icon path, and you paste it. One important thing, when you paste paths in Python, it's really, really recommended that you put here R in the beginning, which stands for the row string. Then you can see nothing happens inside your string. If you're going to remove it, you might encounter that there are going to be certain actions, because as you know, for example, in strings, if you do like this, this is going to be a new line. So there's a meaning when you use this kind of backstring. All right, we don't, I'm not going to use absolute path for now, I just have the icon. So first we need to import from pillow, import image. That's all we need. This is from the pillow package that we installed. Now, first of all, we're gonna load image and here is how to do this. Image equals image open slash icon. And the next thing, we also want to convert it to RG, RGBA. 
Now, we have our image, we convert it to RGBA, which stands for red, green, blue, alpha. Alpha is the transparency layer. And now we can also define new color that we want to set. I'm going to use my orange color for my theme. So it's going to be color equals 255, 157, 47. And the last one is the alpha. 255 means it's not transparent, zero means it's transparent. Right, let's just write here R, B, E, A values of a new color. Now, the next one, let's extract image data. This is how we do this. We write image data equals, and then there's image get data. And we don't need to provide anything inside. That's okay. Also, I don't like to use it as image. I'm going to call it pill image, which stands for the pillow. So I know that this is, uh, that this has the class from the pillow library. It's a little bit easier to navigate for me. Now we have the data. Now we need to prepare the new data. Uh, we're going to overwrite pixels in the data. Here's how we're going to do. We're going to write for pixel in image data. And then in there, we're going to write if pixel Okay, it already makes the suggestions. If the fourth position in the pixel is more than zero, then we're gonna override this color. You see, in this pixel, what you're gonna get, you're gonna get some values. You're gonna get like, I don't know, 100, 100, 100, 255. And this is gonna be like this. This is gonna be R, G, B, and alpha. So this one is gonna be zero, one, two, and three. And when we say here pixel free, we refer to the last alpha channel. So we want to make that this is a visible pixel. Because in my icon right here, you can see that this is a transparent image. And therefore, I might want to check this. Okay, let's remove that. So if alpha channel is more than zero, then we're going to write new data, uh, append. We also need to create the new data right here. We can call it new image data if you want. And inside, we can provide this color. However, here is a trick. Uh, some of your pixels, for example, in this icon, they're going to have a little bit transparency. For example, in this specific image, I know that everywhere around, this is kind of empty, here is empty, empty, this is like alpha is transparent. Then these two frames right here, they're not transparent at all. This is like alpha is 255, so it's opaque. But this one inside, it has a little bit of transparency. Maybe it's like 100, maybe it's like 200, doesn't matter, but it has a little bit of transparency. And I want to keep this kind of transparency so it creates different shades of the color. To do that, instead of overriding the whole color, we're going to create a new color ourselves. In here, we just need to kind of create this kind of tuple with numbers. And inside of there, we're going to write the following. We're going to take our color, it's going to be the first value, then we're going to take color, the next value, and the second one. And lastly, we're going to write here that we want to get pixel free. So we're getting R, G, and B from our color right here. But we're getting our uh, alpha channel from right, where is it, where is it, from, from right here, from the pixel. And therefore, we're going to have our color, but we're still going to kind of use the same transparency as it was used before. And also, I need to add here an else statement. I'm going to write new image uh, data, append. I'm going to keep the same pixel. So if our pixel is not 100% transparent, then we're going to try to change the color to our orange color. But if it's transparent, then we're just going to add this transparent pixel as it is. This is okay. Now we have our data. Now we need to create new image with new color. That's okay. For this I'm gonna write pill image, and then there's a method uh, put data. And inside you're gonna provide new image data like this. We're sort of overriding this variable, but that's okay because it's not gonna kind of save the same file because the next one we need to save it manually. Save new file. And here we're gonna write pill image, save. And we need to call it icon.dark.png. And I think that's it. So in PyCharm, you can right click and then there's going to be run and the name of your file. So I'm going to click on that one. And you can see the moment I did, you can see a new icon appeared right here. There is this icon.dark.png. Let's open it and have a look. This is what it was before. 
and this is what it is right now. So now you know how to override one of the images. Oh, and by the way, have a look here. This doesn't have transparency, but all these kind of dots inside, they have transparency, therefore you have a little different shade. This is why we wanted to kind of uh, preserve the alpha channel. All right, this was the first example, that's fine. You know how to change one image. Next one, we're gonna convert it into a function quickly, and then we're gonna go and find all our icons in our extension. So I'm gonna comment all of it out, then I'm gonna copy this, and let's go to step number two. I'm gonna make a huge comment so we can see right here. So to turn it into a function, we need to define create dark icon. We need icon path. And I think that's okay. You can see I have a lot of suggestions from the AI assistant. I'm gonna make a separate video on how to install AI assistant if you want to. Just let me know in the comments if you want it sooner. Now, we have the icon path here. You need to make sure that this is the one that you open then you could define this color as another argument in your function. I'm quite okay just defining it always orange. Maybe later I'm gonna change it, but now it's okay. Then this one is okay, we're creating new thing, thing, thing. And lastly, we need to modify the path we are creating because we're gonna take this icon path on the top and we wanna make sure that now it has exactly the same path because it's always gonna be in different location, but this time it's gonna have dark PNG. Firstly, I'm gonna go a bit lazy route and I'm gonna say new icon path equals icon path and I'm gonna use the replace method. I'm gonna write here, I'm gonna look for the PNG and I'm gonna replace it with dot dark dot PNG. And make sure you use this one right here. Now, before applying it to the whole extension, we're gonna test it once more. We're gonna use the same icon like here with the relative path. And let's say we're going to create a dark icon and provide this path. We can provide here absolute path or relative. And now we're going to click and click on run. Uh, I don't see anything happening, but this is also because we have exactly the same name. Let's call it dark2, run it again. And you can see this time it worked. I have here icon.dark.2. And you can see it works. So now it's good. We can remove it. Another good thing actually to add, I didn't think of it before. And right here, if OS path exists and icon path ends with PNG, only then we're gonna do this. So this way, we're only gonna run this on images and only if they exist. In case you provide different kind of path, then it's gonna stop execution. Uh, ensure icon exists. That's okay. So this time, if I'm gonna write here something like blah, 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 and click on it, it's not gonna give me any errors and it's also not gonna try to execute it. That's okay. Now we have a function to create a new colored icon. Now we need a new function, we need to get all uh, icons. We're gonna provide here some kind of directory. All right, and now we need to get all icon files. There are different ways to get it. I'm gonna use OS path walk function and here is how it works. I'm already gonna write for, what is it, uh, root directories files in OS walk. And then we need to provide the directory. All right, and when you use this OS walk directory, here's what's happening. It's gonna provide you kind of three items as a returned value. First one is gonna be the root, the path that you provide itself, the directory path. Let's actually change it here to the path, like this. Then dears is gonna be all nested folders inside of this path and files are gonna be all files found inside of this. So now we're gonna iterate for all the files that we found and we're gonna check if the file ends with that PNG, then we can do something with this. And it's also a good idea to make it that icon PNG because otherwise, if you already have some dark icons, then you're gonna kind of create dark, dark icon, which doesn't make any sense. And then here it says that yield OS path join root and file. So it's gonna create a generator with the yield. If you don't know what yield means, you can create uh, all files, call it like this. And instead of yield, you could just all files append and append one by one. And then you could return all files. It's gonna give you almost the same results, but this is gonna be like a function and this is gonna be like generator. 
If you don't know what it means, you can have a look at Python basics, you'll understand. Just know that in the end of the day, it's going to be the same result. Now we can test it. I'm going to write here EF icons, and we're going to get all icons. Inside, I need to provide a path, and this time I'm going to go and grab the path of my EF tools extension. So I'm going to go here, copy path, then absolute path is right here. I'm going to paste it here. And again, make sure you use the R in the beginning so it's like a row string. Now, let's see, print, uh, how many icons did we find? First of all, I'm going to make sure that I don't execute anything else. So I'm just going to get the icons and I'm going to print how many icons I got. I'm going to see found 98 icons that PNG files. This is good. I could also write for icon in EF icons, print icon. And let's have a look. I'm going to click on run. And here I'm going to get a list of all the icons it found, right? There's icon PNG, icon PNG. I can just quickly ensure that, yes, this looks exactly what I need to get actually. Lastly, we actually need to generate our icons and we already made it as a function. So I'm just going to write here, create dark icon and provide an icon. I'm not going to make any print statements. I'm just going to right click and click on run. It's not going to take a long, you can see it takes just an instant because it's very small icons, they're just a few pixels. Now, if I'm going to go to EF tools, I'm supposed to notice a lot of changes here. For example, let's go to, I don't know, just random, random button. I can see icon dark, icon dark, and now it looks much better. So finally, the moment of truth, let's go and test it inside of Revit. I'm going to open Revit, and this is how it looks right now. Everything is very dark, very boring. It's, it's just horrible, right? You can barely see any icons, it doesn't make any sense. So, firstly, let me just close it, and I'm going to reopen Revit 2025. Alright, I opened my Revit, and finally, let's click on EF Tools and have a look at this. Now, everything is orange. Uh, there is a little bit too much orange, I definitely don't want my Python icons to be orange, I definitely don't want my yellow icon to be orange. But this is easy to fix, you can hold Alt, click on it, and for example, remove this icon that dark. Right, in here, I don't want to have it. And I can just visually inspect and see. For me, that's okay. I'm quite happy with how it looks. Maybe I need to maybe stylize it a bit more. But in general, I'm very happy with the results. Also, there is alternative path to solve this issue. And this is to replace your icons with something already colorful. For example, in my Parade Starter Kit, by default, I used all my icons blue. And it already looks much better here. And it also doesn't look so bad in the white theme either. So this is up to you. And I hope you're going to find this useful. All right, and that's how we create dark icons for your Pyravit extensions. I hope you never intended to do it manually, right? And please use my script and it's going to save you a lot of time. And if you are just starting and you want to become Pyravit hacker sooner, please grab my free ebook Beginner's Guide to Revit API. You'll find a roadmap, a lot of code snippet explanations, and in general, it's going to help you a lot on this journey. I want to wish you happy coding and I'm going to see you soon. Goodbye.